with T Quilts and I learned through my news feed that Nancy Zeman has passed today and I had read before where she was critically ill and so I knew that it was going to be happening soon so I thought in honor of Nancy Zeman today that I would do one of her blocks from her 2017 mystery block of the month and I have already printed out my January pattern in actuality i just printed the first page um, when you go to nancyzeman.com and look for her 2017 block of the month i'll give you a page to the top part of the block of the month and you all the way at the bottom of her post you'll see a button for a pdf for you to print and when i did download that that pdf was 22 pages long and it's partly because she has a lot of advertisements of how to use particular rulers and tools that you can make your block with. So I did not print that. I just printed the first page. And they're very basic blocks. They're blocks that have been in the sewing world for a long time. So they're not really copyrighted blocks. But I thought that I would make her goose in the pond block which is the january 2017 block of the month and i'll leave a link in the description box below if you want to do the quilt or do a block or two in her honor but i thought that i would do some of the blocks in her honor so i have already picked up my fabrics for this block and i have also cut my pieces as much as i can for this block so I will show you what I'm working with. So here is a close-up of the block in case you didn't see it before. And I just wrote 2017 because on the top page that part didn't print. And then I just wrote down here what I needed because I was not going to print out 22 pages to do this block. One thing to note that I do actually like about this block is that they are 15 inch finish. So they're not your standard 12 inch finished block so they will not work with those projects. First off, I have decided to make a green quilt. I have so many green fabrics in my scrap bin that I cannot close the drawer. So I have decided that I am going to make a green quilt. So I just went and pulled all green fabrics. All it had to do was be predominantly green. It could have other colors in it. So that's what I will be using throughout making any of these blocks even if I don't continue then I'll just have one green block for my center I have elected this floral print and then I need to do checkerboarding around this particular area and for those pieces I have chosen these fabrics And I won't bring all of the pieces in. I'm just showing you. So this will be my checkerboard. And then I need dark half square triangles. This fabric here would be for my dark half square triangles. And then I also need some lighter half square triangles. And I have chosen this fabric for the lighter half square triangles and then I just chose to do this as a green and white quilt so now I also have a piece of white that I have cut out so you need six fabrics to make this block one background and then five different green fabrics so here's my one two three four and five and again I am not actually reading the directions I think when we start to make quilts we need to realize that we can change how something is made if somebody is telling you to make a half square triangle one particular way you can do it another way so I already had some triangles on a row and I am trying to get rid of them they last a very long time this row has 600 half square triangles that I can make in this size 
So I am trying to use up these papers. Since these units will finish at 3 inch, I elected to use my triangle on a roll paper. And so here is my two fabrics that I have right sides together. And for my dark, I actually need eight of these. So if you count around, you can see where I need eight of those. So I just cut off of enough paper that I can make those eight half square triangles. And then I will place this onto my stack. I will pin this and then I will stitch this. And when I cut apart on the lines, I will have eight perfect half square triangles and I don't have to do any marking or trimming to get those. And then likewise, I need four that are made with the lighter green. And so I have another piece of fabric here. I will just lay my other piece on top and I have just a piece of paper that will make just those four half square triangles. So I'm going to go ahead and make all of my strip sets and then I will also do my half square triangles and come back. I'm back and I have my triangle on a roll paper sewn to my fabrics. And I just wanted to say that I also use Triangulations, which is a CD that has multiple sizes on the CD. So you can print any size you want. But I happen to have this paper, so this is what I'm using today. Now I've already stitched on the dotted lines and now I have to trim around the outside and then cut down the straight lines in the middle. So I use my ruler on the straight line to make sure that I'm square. And then I'm right on to the edge of the paper. And I just continue to trim. And here I do like to use a rotating mat. I don't have to pick up my units to turn it. Okay, so now I have trim all around for outside. So now I just need to cut my solid line. So I have three of those actually. One down the middle. And then this last angle here. Now another thing that I like to do while I have my triangle still laying here, I am just going to turn this so that I have a right angle to the camera, but I'm going to have to turn it when I cut. But right where that thread ends from stitching that diagonal seam, I go ahead and just take my rotary cutter and cut that off. What that does is it gets rid of the dog ears. And I do that on both sides. If I do it while it's still flat, then I don't have to square anything up. I already know that the triangle is squared up because of the paper. And I'm just cutting. I'm not cutting any threads from stitching off of that diagonal line. Now we just tear the paper. I like to hold the seam allowance side and rip the big part. I feel like it keeps the seams more stable. Again, hold the seam allowance, pull the paper back, and because this is thinner paper, it's actually easier to tear. If it was a triangulations piece and I was using my typing paper at home, I would just fold on the lines first. But with this paper, I don't have to do that. Next thing I do, just to avoid having to go to the pressing station, since I haven't sewn anything to this yet, I'll just go ahead and press with my wooden iron. And because I starch my fabrics beforehand, they go ahead and lay pretty flat. These triangles do not need to be pressed open because of how they're going to be placed in the block. 
so I don't have to worry about that. So these were my half square triangles that I needed for my light green and then I also needed to have eight from my darks and I went ahead and did those off camera so I have all eight of those here. Next up is I had to do strip sets for this area in here and this is my dark light dark which is this section here. I need to now sub cut this strip set into one and a half inch pieces. <clears throat> so I'm just going to change rulers. I like working with rulers that are approximate in size to what I'm actually working on. So first I just want to square up a side. And now I want to just sub cut this unit into one and a half inch pieces. And this is a little awkward for me because I'm working on the side instead of in front so I can videotape. And I need eight of these pieces because I need four little nine patch units. So this is four. this is my last unit so I needed eight of these so that I could make half square triangles which means from my other strip set which is this one I needed to cut four and I have already done that so we can keep moving and I am going to now go sew four little nine patch blocks in addition to that since I'm cutting my strips down, I also need four units like this where I've got my light dark light. And so I am now going to just go ahead and cut those units off as well since I'm here. Those units would be cut three and a half. And when I sold these units I mean when I press these units, I pressed all of my seam allowances to the dark fabric. And we need one more. So sometimes when you have a strip set, you may have to reline up again when you're cutting many pieces off. So that's what I'm needing to do now. And then cut off the other end. I can actually lay out part of my block for you here. These are going to go around my center. These light pieces are going on the top and bottoms. And then I have my half square triangles. So this is how my block is looking thus far. I'll pull it out just a little bit. And what I'm missing now is my little nine patch units in the middle. So I will go sew those and I will come right back. I'm back and I have my little nine patch units in my hand and I just again used my wooden iron to press these. I haven't pressed anything with the actual electric iron 
So now I just lay these in. And we're almost done. So now it's just your basic patchwork sewing of where I'm just going to sew row by row. I'm going to actually chain piece the entire thing. And then I will show you this block on my design wall. So I'm back with my goose in the pond block. And I really like it. I like my colors. So I may make a few more blocks. I'm not sure how many of the blocks I'm going to make. But you can also just make one block and maybe make a pillow as a memento of something from Nancy but I just thought that I would share this video with you today I hope you enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment below see you next time bye bye